This is the second part of the integration by parts lesson. Um, now there are times where we actually have to do integration by parts more than once. So let me just show you with this equation really quickly how that might look. Um, the way this is set up right now, I'll explain the tabular method in a moment, but we would do u equals x cubed because it is the algebraic one, and algebraic comes before e to the x. So dv would be e to the x dx. Okay, du would be 3x squared, and v would be e to the x. So we would do u times v minus the integral of v times du. So 3x squared e to the x dx. And if you notice, this new integral requires integration by parts. Uh, and actually, for this particular problem, you'd have to do integration by parts three times. So you would just go u equals 3x squared, dv equals e to the x, take the derivative of u, antiderivative to get v, and just repeat that process. And you actually have to do it one more time, so it gets kind of tedious. Um, so what I want to show you is a method you can do to avoid having to do it this long way more than once. Now, one very important note, lots of people like the tabular method a whole lot and they just want to do it all the time instead of ever doing the traditional way with integration by parts. This first note I have here is super important. You can only use the tabular method when u is algebraic. Okay, and I'm about to show you the tabular method, not what you just saw. So you can only use it when u is algebraic. Now, you, it doesn't have to be a time where it's required more than once, it just has to be where u is algebraic. So, here's how it works. You set up three columns. One for the sign, as in positive or negative, one for the u, and one for the dv. So just like normal, we do have to identify the u, which would be x cubed, and the dv in this case would be e to the x. So we take the derivative in the u column until we get to zero. Now that's why u has to be algebraic. Because if you think about it, if u was e to the x, for example, you could take the derivative of it forever and it would never go to zero. Or trig is the same way. You could take the derivative of it forever. It would never go to zero. Natural log is the same way. The only thing that will take the derivative and eventually end up zero are algebraic or polynomial terms. So in, u, in the u column, we take derivatives all the way down to zero. In the dv column, we take the antiderivative, which for this particular one is you know, pretty darn simple since e to the x is just its own antiderivative. And then in the sine column, we start with positive and then alternate all the way down. And then to get our answer, we simply start at the top sign and go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, and then we stop there because we've hit the bottom. So our first term is a um, positive, I'm trying to figure out a good way to point here, let's do this, it's a positive x cubed times e to the x. So I'm just following that line right there. So positive x cubed times e to the x, so x cubed e to the x. And then I have a negative 3x squared e to the x. And then I have a positive 6x e to the x. Then I have a negative 6 e to the x. And always remember to put plus c on the bottom. So that's the tabular method. And you can use it any time a problem requires integration by parts and the u is algebraic. So I want to show you one more example with that one. x squared cosine of 3x. So we do three columns. We do the sine column do the u column and the dv column. u is x squared and dv is cosine of 3x. Okay, we take the derivative of the u until we get to zero and we take the antiderivative of dv. So antiderivative of cosine is one-third sine of 3x. The antiderivative of that is negative one-ninth cosine 3x and then negative 1 27th sine of 3x. So remember you're doing the antiderivative. So because of that 3x inside you have to divide by 3 each time. 
when you do the derivative with the chain rule, you'd have to multiply by the 3. So when you take the integral, the antiderivative, you have to divide by 3. And then we do the signs, start positive and alternate. And we go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. So be really careful with your signs here, because if you notice, it's a positive x squared times 1 third sine 3x. So that would all combine to this. And then it's a negative 2x and a negative 1 ninth. So it's really positive 2. And then a positive 2 and a negative 1 27th. So negative 2 27th sine of 3x. And don't forget your plus c. Uh, now you notice I'm writing these terms in a pretty specific order. Coefficient, then the x if I have one, and then the trig function. Um, kind of by convention, or I call it math etiquette, that is how you'd write those. But you're multiplying, so if you do it in a slightly different order than me, that's technically still correct. Okay, the last example I'm going to show you is a little bit of a tricky one. And this trick that I'm going to show you is going to need to be utilized any time your u is a trig function. Okay? Um, the only time it's going to happen really is when you combine an e and trig, like we have here. So if you look back at liate, L-I-A-T-E, trig comes before E, so trig is what will be our U. U equals cosine X, DV equals E to the X, DX. So DU will be negative sine X, and V, the antiderivative, will be E to the X. So then we get U times V, minus the integral of v times du. So that would be negative e to the x sine x dx. Okay, uh, before I move on, since I have two negatives, I don't want to have both of those carrying around, so I'm going to go and change it to positives. And then, as hopefully you can see, you're going to have to do integration by parts more than once. It's unavoidable in this problem. So again, u is your trig function, dv is e to the x dx, so du is cosine x, and v is e to the x. Okay, so we're going to have e to the x cosine x plus u times v, so that's e to the x sine x, minus the integral of v du, so that's e to the x cosine x dx. Okay, well we better do something, because if you notice, we just ended up right back where we started. So if we continue the path we're doing right now, this is just going to go on ad nauseum. We're just going to go on forever and ever and ever. Um, and it never ends, unless you do this one trick. So if you remember, the integration by parts rule is an equation. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Now, that means that this part up here is on the left side of our equal sign. Now we don't bother writing that side because it really doesn't change most of the time, but it's going to help us out a lot this time. So let me just get rid of that. Sorry about that. So what we're going to do is set up an equation. I'm going to run out of room. Hold on just a second. Okay. Whoa, that's fun. So all I'm doing is taking my original answer, excuse me, my original question and setting it equal to what I have so far. Because now, if you notice, this part I have underlined is equivalent to this. So the trick I pull is adding this term to both sides. Because by adding it, it cancels out on the right side. And all it does on the left side is give me a coefficient of 2. And we'll go ahead and put plus c here, because we always need a plus c on that right side. So this is actually really close to the answer we want, because the original thing we were looking for up here was the integral of e to the x cosine x. Well, the only difference between that and what we have here is that 2. So the last step is simply to divide both sides by 2. So we divide by 2, and our final answer will be 1 half e to the x cosine x plus one-half e to the x sine x plus c. Uh, good luck. The uh, questions that go with integration by parts are on page 494 of our books.